Have you ever wondered how a social media manager works? Like how do they actually get all of their content written, edited, and scheduled out for all of their clients? Plus do their own stuff. Well, today we're going to pull back the curtain a little bit so you can take a look behind the scenes and really understand how social media managers work. Today, I have a very special guest. Her name is Sarah Zering, and she's going to show us all the things. She's going to show us how she gets content, how she organizes her content, why she uses batching and how she batches, and some tools that you can use yourself. Episode 62 starts right now. Hey there, welcome to The Laura Shipman Show. We hang out here weekly to talk about things like social media, entrepreneurship, marketing, tools, strategies, tips, and it all starts right now. Well, hey, everybody. I'm so excited because today I have Sierra Zaring with me. Welcome, Sierra, to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. You're here too because, well, before I give away everything that we're going to talk about, you and I kind of play in the same field and it's really kind of cool to have somebody else doing the same thing that I kind of do. We both have different lanes that we go in, but um, it's going to be a really good conversation, I think, because there's lots of information out there and people do things differently. And um, social media, well, it's not brand new, but it's still new to the business world as far as marketing goes. And people get so confused about how to do it and do it well. Am I right? (laughs) Absolutely. So many people stress over it and they worry and they just get so lost in all the things to do. And then it's like, it doesn't have to be that hard. It can be really simple. That's right. Absolutely. So before we get started, uh, do you want to just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and who you are and what you do? Yes. So I am a social media manager and I'm a social media coach. So I manage people's accounts and create content for them. And I also help people who don't understand social media like we were just talking about and are looking to grow. So I do both. I work with um, female entrepreneurs and help them reach the next level in their business. Social media is just my passion and helping people reach their goals is always a great benefit and bonus. (laughs) Cool. Is there any one industry that you focus on or not really? Not really. I just, I specifically work with females. I think I vibe better with women. Awesome. Cool. Well, I'm excited. So if you guys are listening and ready to get going with this podcast, Sarah's going to take us through some pretty incredible information, grab a pen and paper, and um, we're going to answer a lot of your questions when it comes to content. So start us out with, I guess, how do you even put together a schedule for content creation? So I like to look at my planner. I'm a planner person. I love my planner. And I like to set a specific time for when I'm going to plan my content. I don't like to do it like right before I'm going to post or every day. I have a one day a week where I plan my content. And I think that really helps because you kind of get in a vibe and a flow and you like feel like, oh, this is going good. Oh, I really like what I last talked about. I can talk on this now. And you kind of like just roll with it. So I like to do it all at once. And I think it really helps. And when I content batch, it just go. So I set a specific time for when I'm going to do that. I do mine on Thursdays. I know a lot of people do theirs on Sundays, like at the beginning of the week. So whatever day you have a little bit of time to set aside to do it, I think is really helpful. That's really cool. So when you content batch or or scheduling, when you set that, set that schedule down, is it just for you or is it for your clients too? Do you have a different day for when you do your clients? I do actually have a different day for when I do my clients do all of my clients on Mondays. So Monday, I'm like content planning for all of my clients. But just on Thursdays, I do just my personal uh, content planning. Just because it's very different. And I feel more, I don't know, energetic when I do mine. (laughs) It's so funny because I'm kind of the same way. I, I do one day for just my clients and one day just for me because it's a different flow. It's a different lane that you're in. So that's so cool. So when you say you use a planner and you plan everything out, I find this really interesting is how do you do that? Is it digital? Is it paper? I'm old school. I'm so old school. I use paper. I have a day designer planner and I've tried a lot of planners and day designer is my favorite because like it's an entire page instead of like a little column. So I absolutely love my paper planner. I do have a virtual planner though Mm -hmm. for like content ideas that I'll keep down. Okay. So tell me, so that planner, when you look at that planner, how does it look? Like, do you, so take us through what, like that day, is it in chunks or how is that 
scheduled so out? So when I'm content planning for myself, mm-hmm. I have a four hour time block that I don't have anything else scheduled and I have it written in their content creation so that I know this is my time. And I do the same thing with my clients, except I'll have like client A, client B, and I'll have them. And I give them each two hours because a lot of the client that I create for them, we've already talked about it, about where they're going. So I don't have to put so much energy. We've already had a call about like where their vision for their stuff is going. Mm -hmm. So I already have a decent plan. Whereas mine, I'm just creating it all in the moment. So I like to give myself a little bit more time. Okay. So let's, um, we're going to kind of bounce back and forth between, I think like you and your clients. So because I know a lot of people get stuck on this, even for themselves, like how far in advance are you doing that call in with yourself, for example, of, okay, what am I going to be talking about this week? Or, or do you think a little bit further and are you there for like, do you plan in a month in advance or something? Like, how does that look? So I do two weeks in advance because so many things can change on social media or in your business. And you don't, I personally don't want to be too far out, especially being a social media manager and stuff. I talk a lot about Instagram and the algorithm and Facebook and changes. So if something happens, I don't want to only be able to talk about it a month in advance. I'd like to still have a little bit of leeway. So I give myself two weeks and I give my clients two weeks too, because maybe they're launching a new product or, you know, if they're in network marketing, something might come out and they don't necessarily know that it's going to come out right away. So I do a two week time frame. Okay. That's cool. So, so then how do you find your content? Like, how do you plan, like, like, where do you get your content from? If you're somebody, if somebody's listening to us now and they're kind of struggling and they, they're like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Like, you know, how do you do that? Like, what do you, where do so, you go for that? I think it's, it doesn't have to be this difficult. I know a lot of people really stress on what am I supposed to talk about and how do I, you know, how do I find that? Mm-hmm. And I don't think it has to be that difficult. I think you're able to talk about whatever you want to. I think if you're called to talk about it, if it fixes a problem, if it's going to make somebody's day, that's what I talk about. And even for like, I, you know, I work with a photographer mm-hmm. and her content. It's not necessarily like this is a fixing of a problem. It's not like a step-by-step thing. A lot of it's just describing her pictures or describing emotions or describing, you know, the day or describing an event with a client. But it's just the way that you kind of create that for whatever you're feeling and whatever you want when they look at that content. When somebody reads your content, what emotion do you want them to feel? Mm -hmm. When somebody reads your content, what do you want them to take away from it? So I think planning that out and being like, if somebody's reading my thing, I want them to either get social media value or I want them to leave with a positive attitude or I want them to feel better about themselves or I want them to have knowledge about my product and I want them to know what I offer, you know, whatever that is. And then I set specific days. So I do like normally like tip Tuesdays is a really big positive one. I know a lot of like fitness people will do like a transformation Tuesday Mm -hmm. or transformation Thursday and talk about, you know, where you were to where you are. Um, I know fun Friday is a really interesting one that I've seen a lot and just doing something that really speaks to you and who you are or like introduction post or talk about your business. There's all sorts of different things that whatever your industry is or whatever your calling is, you can kind of make similar days. So that way you're not coming up with a hundred different ideas every single month. Yeah. Cause that, that could get overwhelming. So, so you recommend kind of creating little buckets for your business and pulling from those little buckets every week. Like on Mondays, you're going to talk about this Tuesdays. That that's great. So tell me like, how do you find those fun posts to talk about like the holiday, you know how, like, I don't know where people get this information, but it'll be national donut day or something like that. Yes. Where <laughs> yes. March 1st is national peanut butter lovers day. <laughs> is it, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> so there I look up, I do all of these little fun things, but, um, the beginning of the month when I'm planning content, I will go on and like into Google and I'll type like national holidays Mm -hmm. and it'll tell you all of the really weird ones like national compliment day or national ice chocolate ice cream day. And you know, there's all sorts of different holidays and some days we'll have like six or seven. Right. And you know, you don't have to use all of them. You can use whichever ones you feel called to talk about or whichever ones, you know, interest you. 
maybe race car, yellow race car day isn't your thing, but maybe you want to talk about the peanut butter. So whatever you think is fun and your audience would like, but I just Google it. I'm like, you know, what's going on this month? I talk about like current events sometimes. I know a lot of people talked about, um, like Valentine's day was a big one and St. Patty's day. Cause they're like really big holidays, but you know, you can talk about the little ones too. And it has just more fun. Cause you're like, Oh my God, I didn't know that was today. How cool. How cool is that? Yeah. And it's, it adds personality to your, um, to your feed too, because if you, if you pick a certain holiday, that's fun for you. I mean, you're going to be, be passionate about it. Right. And so it just kind of sh- like shows a little bit more of your personality when you're talking about those fun holidays. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. So tell me, we talked a little bit before we got on here about repurposing and how you like, how do you not run out of content and how do you use repurposing effectively? So I save all of my content. Everything that I post, I save. I have a Google Doc where I have it all written down. That way I know when I'm creating content, you know, a week later or two weeks later, I'm not saying the exact same thing that I just said. I kind of look over that. But then you also have it for, you know, three months later when you're like, I don't know what to post. You can be like, oh, this post I posted about, this is what I said, and it got really good reviews. Maybe I can, you know, use that. And how can I work that into a new post? Not necessarily saying the exact same thing, but going off of that idea. Mm -hmm. So I save all of my content and that's a really good way I use to repurpose it. Mm -hmm. And then I also repurpose it to other platforms, which I think is really helpful and beneficial too, not using the exact same content, but still getting it across because not everybody's on the same platform. That's right. So you change it up. So let's say um, you were talking about content creation on Instagram. So you might change that up a little bit to fit Facebook and then change it up one more time to fit Twitter, even though maybe it's the same general message. It's it's different though. So it'll appear different every time uh, on every single platform that you posted it to. Yeah, absolutely. I think that the algorithms for everything Mm -hmm. kind of speak and need different things. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, Twitter, you can only use, I think like 150 characters. Well, Instagram, I don't, I can use more. So I'm going to, because I can get, you know, more of a message across. Right. And hashtags work there, but they don't work so much on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So finding what really benefits your audience on that platform, but still creating the same overall branded message, I think is a really strong way to repurpose. I think that's really cool. And then, um, so where, I guess, where do you, you said whatever inspires you and stuff like that to, to make content, but is there a place that you go to, to get inspiration for yourself? Like what if you're stuck or if you, or if you get writer's block and you're like, I, I really am stuck. Like, do you have any tools or tricks or that you can send people to? Well, you're going to think this is kind of silly, okay. but when I get stuck, when I'm doing content for myself, I stop and I have a five minute dance party. (laughs) (laughs) I go to YouTube and I type in like, you know, playlist or whatever and have like a repetitive thing Mm -hmm. and it'll play whatever song comes on first or my Spotify if I'm out and it'll play whatever song comes on first. And I just dance for five minutes and I don't think about anything and I just have fun and be crazy. Mm -hmm. And then I can sit down and, you know, repurpose after that five minutes and be like, wow, okay. I I feel better. And now I kind of feel silly and like loosey goosey. And now I can write. And that really helped me. Sometimes I'll to feel, feel after that dancing, Mm -hmm. but I normally feel a lot calmer and less stressed. That's yeah, that's, that's a good one. I know. I know I take my dogs for a walk just to clear my head sometimes. Sometimes like what I'll do is I'll look at magazine titles. Have you ever done that? Because they might just like give you um, an idea it may not be the article that you're reading, but the way that they word that that headline helps me a lot sometimes too, because sometimes I'm like, I can't think of anything creative at all. <laughs> yes, I love that. So tell me about, um, do you have like any sort of organizational tips for us? Like, like you have all this content and stuff. How do you organize it so you're not continually searching for, oh, where's that picture that I put, you know, that I found or whatever? Do you have a way to organize your content? So I organize all of my content in different lists in the Trello app. Really? Okay. I I love Trello. um, And I actually found it 
that somebody was promoting like a training, a free training through a Facebook group I was in. And I was like, oh, what's this? I'll use this. And it's awesome. And so I have lists for all, like I have 14 different days. So like I plan my content in two weeks in advance. I have 14 different topics that I talk about on those days, just that it's not the same thing every single week. Oh, okay. I like that. Um, just cause that week they're not entirely sure what they're going to get. If it's a Monday, they're not like, Oh, I don't want to hear this. So I'm not going to go to their page on Monday cause it will be something different. Um, but I, I have 14 different days. So I have 14 different columns of like brain dump ideas. So whenever I'm out, whether I'm at the grocery store and see something, I'm like, Oh, I can use that. I'll like open up my phone. And cause I always have my phone on me, open up my phone and go into my Trello dump for whatever that list is. And then when I go to plan my content, I read over all of my like brain dump ideas. And I'm like, oh, actually, that's a really, really good one. I'm going to use that. So that really helps me. That's really good. I, you know, I, I have a Trello account and I haven't gotten there a hundred percent on how I'm going to use it. And I just, I don't know. I just, I haven't figured it out. So, so do you say 14 different days on your Trello account? So is that... 14 different types of content or what do you mean? So by like what I was talking about before, like the tip Tuesdays or like yeah. the fun Fridays. Yeah. It's kind of like that. I have different days that I'll talk about mindset and different days that I'll talk about social media for my own personal account. And so I have different like big topics and then a whole bunch of little topics underneath. Underneath. Okay. That's really cool. And so then you can just easily save any images there. And then when you're ready to use them, you just kind of grab them from there and put them into your account. Okay. Or into whatever platform you're using. Yeah. I save all of the images on next to them. So like I have my brain dumps and then I have the images for that. And I have my brain dump for the next zone and my images. And then I also use Planoly to actually plan out my Instagram grid Uh for Instagram. Uh Um, And I use that to really like piece together which pictures I think work better. So like there's not five pictures of my face right next to each other or five quotes. It's kind of like scattered around. That's good. That's like, I've heard a lot about plan. I haven't used Planoly yet. It's one of those things I'm thinking I might do, but um, yeah, that's a great way to do it. Well, cool. Well, tell people where they can find you on social media. So I am on Instagram at srzaring, which is my last name. Um, and you can find me there. I'm a social media coach and I talk about all of my fun stuff, kind of like I talked about today. <laughs> and then I'm on Facebook at um, Sierra Zaring. And I also have a Facebook group called Mighty Mom Boss, which is just this amazing empowerment community that I created. Well, cool. And so tell us, tell our listeners, you have something special for them, right? That, that, yeah. Tell us what that is. So I um, am doing a Facebook live training on March 20th that is all about social media and growth and strategy based. And it's free. It's inside my Mighty Mom Boss Facebook group. So you can join there and get all the limited access to my training. Very cool. I'm going to link all of that in the show notes so everybody can go ahead and click there. I really recommend that you go check out Sierra's Instagram feed. I follow her there. She's always got something either like something I never knew before or some something that's really inspirational or motivational. I just love the content that you put out there. It's so fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. That makes me so happy. No, it's so true. Oh, and then tell them when you go live on Instagram because you usually do something really cool once a week on Instagram, don't you? Yes, I do. So my New Year's resolution mm-hmm. is to empower 100,000 women in the next five years. Wow. So every Friday. Yeah, that's my goal. That's awesome. <laughs> so every Friday, I do an empowerment-based Instagram live. And then I'm starting to do once a month empowerment-based in the Facebook group that I started. But it's my little tidbit of how to like empower yourself, empower others, ways to just mindset based and just feel better about life, which Mm -hmm. everybody needs those little reminders. That's awesome. That's really good. Well, thank you so much, Sierra, for spending time with us today. And again, we'll link all of those accounts. We'll we'll link her Mighty Mom Boss group to the show notes as well. You guys need to join in there. And what was that date again? That the- March 20th. March 20th. So we'll make sure you guys have that and gain access and get all the information you need. Thanks so much again, Sierra, for joining us. 
Thank you. This was amazing. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Hey there, I just want to say thank you for spending time with me here today. I know your time is super valuable, which is why I am dedicated to providing lots of usable, actionable information in the shortest amount of time possible. Before you go, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. And if you have ideas or topics you would like me to cover in an upcoming show, let me know about it in the comment section provided. 